Hello, welcome to my channel or welcome back. So in the spring, I did a lot of homeschool curriculum videos to share what it is that we're using for various subjects, whether it's independent or family studies. But one thing I haven't shared is the independent and read aloud selections. So we like to do independent reads as well as read alouds and get them all organized before the school year begins. I've been able to solidify our independent reads and our family read alouds for the year. And so I wanted to share which books we have chosen as far as independent reads for our eight year old and 11 year old as well as the read-alouds that we will do together as a family. So enjoy. I've shown this bookshelf before in videos, but this is our kind of middle grade to high school level historical fiction shelves. And so this is the ancient history shelf. This is the colonialism shelf. This is the 1800s Civil War shelf. And then this is the continuation of 1900s into the modern era. And so for this school year, we finished here with Queen Elizabeth. So we are gonna start with Children of the Longhouse and we will go about here to Sky Chasers. I think this series is a bit mature yet and the Avi Sophie's War is a bit mature, but otherwise these will be the books that we are going to be reading mostly independently. So I'm gonna share what my youngest will read. He's about third or fourth grade level. And then my oldest is about sixth or seventh grade level. In order to make sure that I have the books broken up by what we're doing in history, what we're doing in science, what we're doing in language arts, I've created a page that goes into my planner. So I'm showing what my youngest will be reading in July. And then I go through each month. These are the reads for him on this schedule. And then I've done the same thing with my oldest. You can see I've marked out where the Brave Raider classes are, if there is an arrow that goes along with it. And then I have our family reader read alouds and I've broken them out by family read alouds. This is what we would listen to at night when we eat supper versus school where we're either listening to that or reading it during school time. So for some of these books that we, historical fiction books that we are reading for school, a few of them we will listen to together in our school time, and then the rest of them will be independent reads. I found Lois Linsky's Indian Captive, the story of Mary Jemison on Audible, I think, for a free copy. And so we will listen to this together as a family. And then I also have the Esther Forbes, Johnny Tremaine as a audible audiobook. We do love this illustrated by Michael McCurdy version, but we will listen to that. I have the, my Apple Notes app. I've put a table that I can access on my phone or my iPad or my laptop that lists all of the audiobooks that are related. So you can see here is the Indian Captive by Linsky that I mentioned that was just part of the Audible Plus, part of the Audible membership. So that's in there. And then as I look for each year, when we want to add certain books in, you can see Finding Langston is one of the ones that I want my daughter to read. I may just have her listen to it on Scribd that month. And so I have those all marked down. And then I also have just regular read alouds, not connected to science or history or literature. They're just fun read alouds that me, we may wanna do as a family or the kids may wanna to listen to while doing laundry. For historical fiction, my oldest is going to read Children of the Longhouse by Joseph Bruchak. She is going to read Bluebirds by Carolyn Star Rose, who also wrote Maybe, which I think 
is more well known, but this is also a story in verse. She's going to read The Lion's Roar by M. L. Stainer. She will read this Dear America, the Diary of Remember Patience Whipple from the Mayflower in 1620. She will read Out of Many Waters by Jacqueline Dembar Green. She will read Nzinga, the Warrior Queen of Matamba. I have The Witch of Blackbird Pond on her list by Elizabeth George Spear. I remember this book. It is a Newbery Medal winner. And I will probably pre-read this just to make sure that the themes aren't too mature, but I think she's gonna read that one too. She'll read The Kidnapped Prince. Some of these are suggested in the history curriculum we're using. Some of them I've had. She will read The Beaded Moccasins, the story of Mary Campbell by Linda Durant. She will read The Winter People by Joseph Bruchak. She will also read Carry On Mr. Bowditch by Jean Lee Latham. This is also a Newbery medal. She will read The Dear America, Five Smooth Stones, Hope's Diary, and that's 1776. And I think we will end, either read this next summer or end the year reading Sky Chasers by Emma Carroll. Our shelves flanking the other side are our fiction and literary choices. For my oldest, for literary reads, I'm having her read The Search for Delicious, it's such an old copy. And then for her language arts with The Good and the Beautiful, they have her reading Little Lord Fauntleroy for level six. She is taking two Brave Writer classes. And so we chose Amari and the Knight Brothers, which is just getting a lot of praise right now. So we're very excited about that. And then we chose The Lion of Mars as well. So we're excited about those two Brave Rider classes. We've never done that before, so that's exciting. For my youngest independent reads for history, we have A Lion to Guard Us by Clyde Robert Bulla. We've read The Beast of Lore and loved it. So hopefully that one will also delight us. We have The Courage of Sarah Noble by Alice Dagliesh. We have The Arrow Over the Door by Joseph Bruchak. We have the entire Felicity series. My daughter read these and loved them. And then there's a movie that we will watch after that. And then The Secret Soldier, The Story of Deborah Sampson by Anne M. McGovern. And then he will reread The Magic Treehouse Revolutionary War on Wednesday. And then lastly, he will read The Cabin Faced West by Jean Fritz. He doesn't have as many historical fiction independent reads as my oldest. So I've chosen these two nonfiction reads for our space unit. So it's the Magic Treehouse Space Research Guide, and then it's a level five step into reading Moonwalk First Trip to the Moon. And then for the literature reads for my third slash fourth grader, I have this summer read, Professor Diggins' Dragons by Felice Holman. It is an old vintage copy of a fabulous book, so if you can get your hands on it, I highly recommend it. It's kids who go and live in this marvelous bus with this professor and they each have individual quote-unquote dragons to battle and to grow through and it's fabulous. Then I have this Black Star of Kingston actually signed by S.D. Smith. We will have by William Steig, Abel's Island. This is a Newbery Honor book. I'm going to have him read Poppy by Avi. And then at the end of the school year, I think he'll be ready to start this series, which we love. Okay, on this shelf, I have all of our books that we have read or are reading for 
read alouds as a family so that I can just always remember these are the ones that we read as a family. I will say that for these family read alouds, many of these, while I have the hard copy, we listen to on Audible or Scribd. For our summer school read, so this is not necessarily as a family, we're reading this during school time. We are reading Case Closed, Mystery in the Mansion by Lauren Magaziner. And this is such an interesting book. It's a pick your path, crack the case book where you choose what your next steps are. So as you read it, you then come to a place where you have to decide what to do. And if you make a wrong turn, you don't actually get to the solution. The case just gets closed, hence the name case closed. So I'm reading this aloud. I will say this came as a recommendation from Chantel at Intentional Homeschooling or Intentional Life. And she mentioned that the younger brother character of Frank is really annoying. So I made the executive decision to just not read any dialogue really that relates to him. So as I'm reading it, I'm skipping ahead past him and just getting into what the other two kids are saying and the other characters. So it's not the most well-written dialogue and mystery story, but it is so fun to get to choose and pick your own path. So it totally makes up for it. So right now we are listening to Swallows and Amazon by Arthur Ransom. And then we'll finish the Chronicles of Narnia series with book six and book seven. And then we are going to read The Tale of Despero. We'll listen to that as an audiobook. And then we are, my husband asked, and so we're gonna do Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. We love this story. And my kids have not heard it, just my husband and I have listened to it. So we will listen to that as a family. And after Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library, I think what we are going to do is A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline Langle. This is actually all four of the stories. So it's the quartet of A Wrinkle in Time, A Wind in the Door, A Swiftly Tilting Planet, and Many Waters. I doubt we will read them all as a family, but it will at least get us started. So there's that. And then honestly, I'm not 100% sure. I might do the Penderwicks because I do love that story and I would like to get my kids engaged into reading the rest of that together. But by that point, we're into the spring of next year once we finish all of the ones I've mentioned. And so I might make that judgment call then. Thanks so much for watching. I love books. I could talk about books for hours. So hopefully this gave you some ideas. If you have any comments about the books that we've chosen for the year, or if you want to share the books that you have chosen for the year, or any recommendations you have based on what you have seen that we're studying this year, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. Until next time.